think if you mean the U.S. press, um, because I think, of course, we have to look at the context of, um, if you mean American foreign policy, we certainly have seen that there can be an influence from uh, British media, French media, other media sources as well can influence what happens in the White House, what happens at the State Department. Um, I think the first time that we can see it in modern history, this was before my time, but would have to be the Vietnam War. Um, that's when the first opportunity that the press had to really be on the ground with American forces, document the, uh, you know, the body count, and really bring home to the American public what was going on and turn the tide of public opinion against that war. I think we all know from our history books that the press was really instrumental in that. And I think that, along with um, the Watergate story, um, probably were responsible together for leading to what I believe was probably a pretty high point in public trust for the media by the mid-70s, along with the fact that that was when we had kind of three network news casts and everybody was used to sitting in their living room and watching three trusted anchor men, because they were men at the time, and uh, with FCC regulations of fairness and balance, everyone was getting a pretty uniform news source at the time. So I'm always interested in how much the public trusts the media, because I think that really informs and feeds back into this cycle of if the public trusts the media, they put pressure on elected officials to do the things that they feel are correct, make the changes in policy that they think need to be made. And I do think that it was a lot um, about press coverage of Vietnam that led to rising public pressure that you know changed U.S. policy in that war.